In this video, I'll refinish this old end table. I found this table in a thrift store. It was made by the Lane Furniture Company in the 1960s. And I think it used to have a second level to it. So it would have had a shelf on top, but it's not there anymore. But you can still see the shadow from where it was and some holes where either screws or dowels went to hold it on. So I'll need to fill in those holes and do some veneer repair where the veneer has been damaged and refinish the whole thing. I started with the veneer repair. First thing I had to do was to find a piece of veneer that would work. The table has a walnut veneer on it, and I have a whole bunch of walnut veneer that I could use, but I wanted to try to find a piece that was as close to the color of the original as possible. So I scraped some of the finish off and just wet the veneer down to get an idea of what the color is without any finish on it, because that's what I'd want to match my new veneer to. And this piece looked like it was the closest match. It wasn't exact, but it would work. And then I cut out a piece of the new veneer that would be big enough to cover all the damage. And I traced the shape onto the old veneer so I'd know where I had to trim away to fit the new patch. And then I took a chisel and cut out any veneer that would be in the way of the patch. I also had to fill in this hole where there used to be a dowel that probably held the upper shelf on. And I needed to fill that so that I'd have a good surface to glue the new veneer to. And to do this, I used some epoxy putty. Once the putty had hardened, I could sand it and just get the whole area flat and ready for the new veneer to be glued on. I glued on the new veneer with super glue. I didn't want to use wood glue because I had the epoxy in there and I wasn't sure if the wood glue would stick to that very well. Once the glue was dry, then I could trim off the excess veneer that was hanging over the edge. I also had this other little spot that needed a patch, and I did that one pretty much the same as the larger patch.
there was a spot where the veneer was coming off. And to fix that, I just used some super glue. And then shot some accelerator on it. And that just makes the glue dry faster. And to take care of the spot right above it that was missing veneer completely, I just took a little sliver of new veneer and glued it in. To fill in the old dowel holes that were on the top, I used a plug cutter to make some walnut plugs from some scrap that I had. And I just glued them in. Once the glue was dry, I just cut it flush with a chisel. On this hole, the dowel was still in there and there was some veneer damage around it so I decided instead of trying to plug the hole, I would just cover it with some new veneer. And to do this one, instead of cutting the patch first, I did it the other way and I trimmed out any of the damaged veneer, put some tape over it and made an outline of the patch with a pencil. And then I used that to cut a new patch from some new veneer. The surface wasn't totally flat, so I took some sawdust and mixed it with glue and put that in there first to help fill some of the small gaps.
and then I glued in the patch. On this spot, I also had to put in a veneer patch. There was a dowel that was still in the hole, but I had to chisel some of that away so that I'd have enough depth to get the veneer patch in there. And then I made an outline of the shape that the veneer patch would need to be. trimmed out any excess veneer. I used some sawdust and super glue to fill in some of the imperfections and get a better surface to glue the patch to. And then I glued it in with some super glue. There was a spot on one of the legs that looked like it might have been chewed by a dog. And to fix that, I used some epoxy putty and I went over the whole thing and tried to get all the marks filled in. And once it dried, I just sanded it smooth. For these smaller holes, I just filled them in with some wood filler. Once all of the repairs were done, then I stripped off the finish. And there really wasn't much left of the finish especially on the top. So I started just with a scraper and scraped off as much as I could. And then I sanded it to remove the rest. And I chose to scrape it first instead of just sanding it from the start because I feel that it's quicker than trying to sand it all off and also it saves sandpaper.
and then I could apply stain to the whole piece. And I'm using a gel stain. I use two different colors. The first color is called candlelight. After that first coat of stain was on, I could see that the epoxy repair on the leg was going to need some more color for it to blend in. To do this, I just took some amber shellac and some pigments, and I mixed some of the pigment with the shellac until I got a color that helped the epoxy to blend in with the rest of the leg. I also used these pigments on the spots where I used the wood filler to help blend those in. The spot where I plugged the dowel hole also needed some touching up with some color. There was one spot where there was a little bit of a gap between the dowel and the tabletop. And since that gap was round, since it was following the curve of the dowel, it went against the grain and really made it stand out. So I just lightened that a little bit so that it didn't stand out as much. And I also used the color on some of the veneer patches where the seam ran across the grain. And again, just sort of lightened it a little bit and helped it to blend in more. So your eye wasn't drawn to that spot as much. Once the first coat of stain was dry and the touch-ups were dry, I went over the whole thing with some shellac just to seal it all in. And then I applied the second coat of stain, which was a different color, and this was antique walnut. When that second coat of stain was dry, then I went over the whole piece with some wipe-on satin oil-based polyurethane.
after the polyurethane had dried, I noticed this one veneer patch still seemed like the color wasn't quite right. So I just took the candlelight gel stain and applied a little bit to the patch. And then I took a dry brush and lightly went over it and just tried to blend it in. Once that dried, I went over it again with another coat of polyurethane. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.